What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex, and this is Ask the Cheese Gaming. Welcome back to another 16-bit review. This week, I'm going to take a look at Bonkers. It was developed by Sun L, some of whom also worked at Capcom. Which, by the way, there's actually a misconception about this, that this game was developed by Capcom. It was not. And published by Capcom. Although, they did work on the Japanese port. This game had a North American release date of October 1st, 1994. The story goes, One evening, Bonkers and his friend Lucky P Piquel were on a drive when Toontown's most sacred treasures were stolen by a mysterious thief. Now it's up to Bonkers D. Bobcat to crack the case. There's a total of six levels to clear, with Bonkers being able to run, jump, sprint, and roll and throw bombs and trust me when I say you're gonna need a lot of bombs to beat these bosses overall the controls for this game are quick and responsive Bonkers primary attack is to jump on enemies or just throw bombs at them and next I want to touch on the music and sound design of this game if you've played any other Disney platformers you should kind of have an idea of what to expect Overall, the sound effects pay very good homage to the original cartoon from which this game is based, which had about three seasons or so back in the 90s. Likewise, the music is a similar mix of bright cheery tunes, which fit the overall motif of this game. The only real negative that I can say about Bonkers is the lack of save states. For some reason, the Japanese and version of this game has save states, but the American version doesn't. The only explanation for this that I've found is the fact that in the U.S. back in the 90s we had places like Blockbuster or Hollywood Video, if you were where I live, and you could rent this game and they wanted people to actually buy it instead of just running it. So that's why the lack of save states. So this is a game if you want to play it, you got to sit down and beat it all the way through. Now, thankfully, with a sprint mechanic, that's not too challenging. Overall, this game is just kind of your average run-of-the-mill mascot Disney platformer. Now, finally, we need to answer the question, is this game worth picking up and adding to your collection today? Well, if you really love platformers, or you just really enjoy Disney games, then sure, absolutely, go ahead and pick this one up. The problem is that back in the 16-bit era, there was just an overabundance of mascot platformers. I don't think that Bonkers is a bad game, it's just not really a great game either, it's just kind of in the middle. So if you're a hardcore platformer fan, want something really challenging, then nah, you could stay away from this game. But if you're just a casual fan looking for something fun, then sure, go ahead and pick up Bonkers. Thanks for watching everybody, until next time.